Welcome to Moments for Moms. I'm so excited for you to join me on this episode today. We're gonna hear from my new friend, Fiona Colley Langham, and she's gonna tell us an incredible journey that she's been on with her son, Huxley. We're gonna learn all about GLUT1 deficiency, which I've never even heard of before. You guys are gonna be so encouraged. We're also gonna hear a new home hack from Stephanie, a moment of mental health from Dr. Gibbs. So grab a cup of coffee or tea and take a moment just for you. Hey friends, I'm so excited that you're joining us. And as I told you before, my new friend Fiona is here. And Fiona, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Love your accent. It is my favorite. It does it still sound English though? You know, I've been here 10 years and- It really, that's amazing. I know. It does. I feel, I feel, every day I'm like, am I still British? You are, you very <laughs> much are. I'm somebody that's not. Okay, <laughs> You good. very much are. Good. Thank you for coming. I. Love that we were connected by one of our mutual friends mm -hmm. and your story is just incredible. And I, the couple of videos that you sent me on Instagram, I just like some of those images. I, I can't imagine going through that as a mom. So tell me first a little bit about your family mm -hmm. and about yourself so everybody can get to know you. So I moved to Nashville 10 years ago. Now, I think it's almost 11 um, for music mm -hmm. originally. So um, I signed to a label and I was making music and yeah, I moved here. It feels like a lifetime ago, honestly. Right. Um, and then I met my husband nine years ago. Okay. Um, that was and, pretty quick. After well, I yeah, I've been here just over a year. Yeah, that's awesome. He, uh, he actually sold me a car. He had a car dealership. <laughs> And he sold me a car and I was like, oh, sold a car, got a husband. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, but we, we were together for a long time before we actually got married. We got married actually um, four years ago this weekend. Oh, congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, that was, uh, that was kind of, you know, we, when we both, when we got together, he's from here, I'm from mm -hmm. England. We were very, very different people, very, very different upbringings, very, everything was different. Sure. And so I think having that time to to date for so long yeah. was important for us. Yeah. Um, even though that's not a thing here, I feel like everybody gets married within the year. When yeah, they meet we did it. We, I think we were engaged for, or dating for three and a half years before yeah. we got engaged. Which here is considered like a really long time. And I felt like it was. Yes. Well, <laughs> was actually, by the time annoying. I got to five years, I was kind of like, hang on a minute, why are all these people around me right. now on their like second baby? Yeah. And we're still, you know, we're still dating. We're still, we're still eating steaks. What's happening? Like, um, so yeah, so we, uh, we, we got married four years ago. Um, and I still, I still make music. I've, you know, that kind of, that, that was always my passion. Yes. That's why I ended up being here. It definitely has been put to the side. Yeah. And, but the good thing about that is that there's always something to go back to mm -hmm. and they can always go back to it. It's not, yeah. it's not, there's no deadline with Absolutely. that. So, but right. it took me a long time to know that. I think, uh, I think I was for a long time trying to chase both things and, mm -hmm. and not happy with that and not doing a good enough job of that. And so now being able to put that aside and focus on what I, what what's important, which currently right now is, you know, my children. Right. I have two young children. I have Huxley Gray Langham. Mm -hmm. He is two and a half, I say, almost three. Uh, and I have Serafina Rain and she is nine months old. Love it. So and they're so beautiful. They are, they really are. Yes. They, they are these little, blondie babies which is hysterical because my husband is very dark and you know he looks he people always think he's middle eastern actually which okay. is hilarious because yeah. he's from uh, louisiana <laughs> so and and wherever we go anywhere ever, people try and speak farsi to him they think he's iranian or persian wow uh, which is funny because my sister's husband is persian okay so yeah but yeah everywhere we go and he's like oh i'm <laughs> Yeah, one time this, this because he's a car dealer too, right? And so one time this very old. So he's still doing that. Yes. Well, okay. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this this old guy, this old Persian man was like, "Why are you not speaking your 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 tongue?" And he was like, "I'm from Bogalusa, Louisiana. I don't know Persian." So to have these like little blondy yes. babies is is really funny. That's so funny. Charlie's yeah. blonde too, and I'm 
a, not darker skin, but I do have a little bit of a darker skin. I'm Italian, mm -hmm. yeah. so darker hair. And Charlie has zero Italian in him. I've, so he is blonde. He looks like my husband. And it. everybody always comments on that. I'm like, I don't, I know. It's you just crazy. Know. You yeah. just never know. They're, maybe they'll just, you know, get darker hair as well. Or maybe Serafina will get some hair. She's still bald. So. She's nine months though, right? She is, yes. yeah. yeah. Just a big old bald head. That's so funny. <laughs> and we were talking about her earlier. Yes. So... Just to kind of get into Huxley's story a little yeah. bit and what you dealt with. And we were talking about how with Serafina, like I was commenting on your videos because Charlie's two and he doesn't want to eat anything. Everything's gross except for a hot dog and some veggie noodles. So I was just watching her, like you feeding her oh, and thinking like, yeah. oh, I remember when he would just eat whatever like was on the spoon and loved it. And now it's just like, yeah, food is all like consumes my life. I'm always thinking about I'm who's sorry. eating what. Yep. Do we have food in the house? And yep. <laughs> it's exhausting. Food literally consumes my life. For yes. sure it does. Yeah. So let's go into Huxley's story a yeah. little bit here. So when Huxley was three and a half months old, um, uh, he was born in August and, and this that was, you know, COVID. So the, we'd already spent, you know, 2020 kind of alone anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I will never forget, uh, it was like November 18th, we we're at home and um, I was taking him up to bed and I looked at him and I was about to put him in his in his crib and I looked at him and he just wasn't breathing. Like he was oh stiff, imagine. he was just in the horror in his eyes. And I completely panicked and yeah. ran straight downstairs, um, got in the car and drove to the hospital. I actually didn't even put him in the car seat. I wouldn't I, I, either. It was funny because I actually got reprimanded by that by one of the doctors. And I was like, do you have children? What? He did not, actually. Of course so he did. I was like, <laughs> Who would do that? Um, but yeah, I drove to the emergency room. I called my husband on the way and I said, he's not breathing. And, mm. you know, it's my first baby. And he was very calm on the phone. He said, he will meet me at the emergency room but explain to tell me what's happened. Um, at the time we lived eight minutes from Vanderbilt. So okay. that's another reason why I drove there and didn't call an ambulance because I was like- You could get there faster yeah. probably, yeah. Um, and I meet him at the at the, the doors of the of the emergency room because because of COVID, two people can't go in. Right. So he wanted to meet me outside first so that we could speak and I, he could find out what's going on because he knew that once I went in there, you know, and at this point he was, now breathing again and he had the hiccups and he was like I he was fine imagine. and and so you know we get there and my husband looks him over and he was like he seems fine like what well, you know and and I for a second thought he's fine I must this must just be and then he did it again right there in my husband's arms and actually my husband ran in with him and because that would be your reaction to panic yeah yeah I just can't yeah I, like when watching your videos I was just even trying, like, I, I feel like being a mom, like for me personally, has come with so much fear and oh, anxiety yeah. that I didn't expect. Yeah. Um, so just like watching some of your videos and then like seeing some of the pictures with him, like hooked up to stuff and something on Oof. his head. And like, I just like tears were coming in my eyes because I just, as a mom, I really, I can't imagine I would panic too. I would not absolutely not put Charlie in a car seat. No. So. I, I totally understand that, and and I can't wait. This is such an incredible story. So we have to take a short break. So if you guys will hang with us, Stephanie's gonna show you a home hack, and then we're gonna come right back with the rest of this really incredible and miraculous story. The hack, the shimmy. Hey there, I'm Stephanie, and I'm so happy to be back with you for What the Hack. In an earlier episode, I shared with you guys that through hard work, sacrifice, and a lot of prayer, my husband and I were able to get debt free. No mortgage, no car payments, and no credit card bills. Well, on that journey, I discovered a few things that helped us save money, so I thought I'd share those things with you, and maybe it would help you too. In the very beginning, I discovered one of our biggest money wasters was going out to eat, whether it be me going through the drive-thru or us treating ourselves to a meal out. So I immediately stopped that and what we started doing was meal planning. So I would take my handy dandy notebook, which is very well loved, you can see, I used it a lot. And I would sit down and I would simply write down the days of the week. I would then go to my refrigerator, my freezer, my pantry, and I would see what I had on hand because that's one of the biggest 
ways you can save money is to use what you already have. So I would see what meals I could make, assign those to a night of the week, and then I would go online to the store flyers, the store ads, and see what was on sale. And I would plan my other meals according to what was on sale at the grocery store. And then I would plan my grocery list. I would write it out according to that. Because if you go to the store and you just shop randomly, you're buying things that you you may not ever use. You may not use in the future and they, it may go bad. So you want to have a plan. Pre-planning and being organized are two of the easiest ways to save money. So I would plan the whole week out and then we would have leftovers on the weekends. Now you can take a leftover and you can turn it into something else so your family doesn't get sick of having leftovers. One night I might put a roast in the crock pot with potatoes and carrots and all the seasonings. And then I'll take the leftover roast and another night I'll shred it up, put some barbecue sauce in it, have barbecue beef sandwiches with chips. Super simple. So when you're planning your meals, try to figure out something you can use for something else. Now in the beginning, I would do a week at, the time, at a time. I got to where I was doing a month at a time. So I wasn't going to the grocery store so often because even though you have a list, sometimes you see those things that you want to get and you just grab them. So to save money, I would go once a month, minus fruits and vegetables. I would go occasionally and buy those. And that saved us a ton of money. Now, I will tell you, every two weeks on payday, I would go through a drive through and treat us to something that we loved from somewhere else so I didn't have to cook. But it saved us so much money. It helped us to get debt free. And I'm hoping it'll help you. I'm going to put my email right here. If you have any questions, I'm here to help. I feel like we went through this debt free journey for a reason. And if it was help to help somebody, I am more than happy to help you. So drop me an email if you have any questions. And I can't wait to see you next time on What the Heck. We want to connect with you. Make sure to visit our website, momentsformoms.tv, for the latest episodes of the show, guest information, resources, and so much more. Visit momentsformoms.tv today. What's your breakfast, Yummy? All the way. You want to throw away? Are you all done? I done. Good job. We ate most of our breakfast this morning and didn't ask for goldfish or fruit snacks once. Yay! Is this so good? I ate it all. Yep, you ate it all. Good job. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that fun tip from Stephanie. I love her and I'm so honored that she's a part of this show with us. So we are here and we're talking to Fiona and Fiona, you're here sharing your incredible story. We were just talking about your baby Huxley mm -hmm. and now we got to the point where now he's, you thought that he, he wasn't breathing. You didn't thought he was not breathing and you rushed him to the emergency room. He came back your husband got there and he did it again. So now your husband's running in with him. So pick up where yeah. we left off. So we get to the emergency room and um, at that point he still wasn't breathing. And so they, you know, at this point had just taken all his clothes off and he's on this bed and it's, you know, he was tiny. He was three and a half months old. Yeah. So, and I, and at this point I'm just in shock and everyone's rushing around everywhere doing all the things. And um, it, they confirmed that, it seemed like a seizure. They gave him medicine and right. they admitted us for five days. And from after that night, he didn't have another seizure. So we spent five days there and they're just kind of like, well, he seems fine. Because other than these episodes, he was fine. He wasn't, right. no fever, no sickness. He actually had, they did a, a multitude of tests. They did a lumbar puncture. Um, and actually the results from that lumbar puncture that first night would have been the diagnosis if they had known that mm. that is the diagnosis. Um, and so we leave a week later and they just say, you know, well, it probably was a virus and he's fine now and they send us home. And so we go home and, and we, you know, I tried to put it behind mm. me. He, he seemed sleepy and now I'm like hyper vigilant of everything. I was going to say, like, did you just like stare at the baby monitor all night? Pretty much. Because that's what I would do. Yeah. I, I do that yeah. anyways. And yeah. <laughs> I was just like driving. I was, I told my husband, I was like, I, 
I'm dangerous driving in the car because, you know, with the yeah. trying to see, I'm like, I, I, I'm not concentrating. Right. I'm not because I'm looking at him all right. the time. I hated driving. I hated, luckily, I wasn't going many places. Anyway, um, two weeks later, I'm at home. One of my girlfriends over, we're making dinner. My husband was at work and, and she is feeding him a bottle. And uh, she said, babe, I, I, something's happening. And I look at him and he's not breathing again. Mm. And so we go back to the emergency room. Um, this time he had 15 seizures. They were confirmed as seizures. And uh, we were admitted again. Um, and, you know, this is now December because it was a couple of weeks later. And we're admitted again. And this time they say, okay, we're going to do genetic testing. We're going to do find out what these seizures are. But in the meantime, we're just going to, you know, medicate him mm -hmm. to uh, like stop them because, you know, they do damage. And so my baby that was like happy and smiley and all the things is now very drugged up and mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't really do much now. Um, and we're discharged again because obviously until those results come back, right. you know, and it, uh, it fast forward a few days, we're now, we're, we're home and it's getting to Christmas time. And I am just like, I, I did not feel, my husband and I did not feel like it was enough to just sit and wait for these results to come back for six weeks. Right. So we went to try and find a second opinion. Mm -hmm. And it was crazy because a woman from Instagram that I'd met at a girl's brunch a couple of years before messaged me and was like, you need to go and see um, this doctor at Centennial. My husband knows him. Okay. I can get you in. And I'm like, because these neuro neurologists, they, it's a long time. Yes, like, yes. There's six weeks minimum wait right. list. So on Christmas Eve, we uh, get in to see Dr. Pina Garza. His name is Jesus. And when I get the email over, it said Jesus. Right. And I'm like, okay, right. Christmas Eve, <laughs> we're going to see Jesus. Right. <laughs> Here we are. Um, and we, we go to see him. And he actually put my mind at rest a little bit and was just like, I think this is childhood epilepsy. I'm not sure, but, you know, Huxley seems fine. And let's just, let's take his medication down though. This is too much like for his body, for his age. And, and then we go home and we try and get through Christmas and I'm just waiting mm. for these results. And then on the 27th, a new seizure arrives, but it's not a seizure as it turns out. It was a rapid eye movements. It's like oh he was chasing goodness. flies and, and, we call Dr. Pini Garza and he says, just come in, just come in. So we go in to Centennial now. We've changed hospitals. Right. Um, and my husband has done all this reading. And at this point, my husband knows that it's one of two things, but hasn't told me this at this point because I am a wreck. Sure. And yeah. his okay. very smart engineer mind has mm -hmm. just kind of, just, he reads. That's what he does. He is... He is very good at that and he knows that it's one of two things and one he will not make it a very long much longer and the other one is glucose transport disorder which is a um, lack of glucose to the brain so it doesn't get through the blood brain barrier and so it's like an energy crisis of the brain which causes these seizures wow. and um, New Year's Eve um, we're in Centennial. We were just, you know, we were allowed to be in Centennial together, actually, mm -hmm. unlike Vanderbilt right. that had the one parent rule. Yes. Um, and because of the, the, at the severity of what's happening, we were allowed to be together. And we get the results back and he has glucose transport disorder. They tell me immediately, you have to stop breastfeeding. You have to, we have to get him on a medical ketogenic diet, which is food. Right. It is, it's right. not medication. We help mm -hmm. his brain by getting ketones to his brain. Um, and so we, we go back to Vanderbilt, start the ketogenic diet, um, and start our journey now on how we have feeding his brain with ketones. Um, and you know, I could talk to you all day about the, what that looks right. like, but like, you know, long story short, fast forward. And he now, um, he now lives a relatively normal existence because of food because of what I feed him and all his food is weighed and measured. Um, and because of that, you know, he's, he's doing well. The average diagnosis for this condition is, is um, four to five years old. So mm -hmm. these children have starved mm -hmm. of energy mm -hmm. for that long. There's only about uh, 2,000 people diagnosed, but there's about 14,000 people out there that have it that don't know yet. I've never heard of it until I yeah. got connected with you. Yeah, it's it's rare, but it's not that rare. 
that it's just underdiagnosed. Right. And uh, if, you know, Huxley was diagnosed in 40 days. Wow. And because of my husband's reading and because the Lord just took over and guided us where we needed to go and that he just was in all of it. And, right. you know, it's, we don't know what his outcome will be because it's, you know, not, most children aren't diagnosed that young, but he, he has balance issues, but he does therapy and, mm -hmm. you know, we just continue to just pray that what we're doing will, you know, will be enough. And he is a miracle really yeah. already. It, it's so miraculous. And just like seeing how like the Lord led your steps and, and your husband and, and how, just like how God brings us together, because I would be like you total panic if, Bobby knew that, okay, here's two possible outcomes. One, he's not going to make it. The other one could possibly be this. I don't think he would tell me, and Bobby's my husband, sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't think he would tell me either because yeah. in my, with like the fear and anxiety that I do struggle with, I would go to the other one, mm -hmm. like constantly, like he's not going to make it, he's not going to make mm -hmm. it, he's not going to make it and just live in that. And how, how, we only have a minute left and I wish we had so much more time. How, how can you encourage a mom that might be going through this is traumatic. This mm -hmm. is terrifying. Like, mm -hmm. what, what? How can you encourage them? What, what was your encouragement to them? I would say, do whatever your gut says mm -hmm. first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Question everything. Question everyone, uh, and don't give up hope. Just don't give up hope yes. because if you would have told me two years ago that I would be in this peaceful right. place now, absolutely would yes. never have have thought or imagined that. Yeah. But it is possible. But you have to dig deep and you have to just just pray, honestly, yes. that you can find that peace because it is out there. It is. Absolutely. Okay. And quickly, the Glute One Foundation. Uh -huh. Tell me just quickly about that. Too, Glute so One Foundation it. is um, a community that we have that we're, we're all moms with uh, children with Glute One or, or you know, now adults. Right. Uh, there's a lot of new diagnosis happening now mm -hmm. and the diagnosis age is getting younger. So yes. it's a community of us and, you know, we're always just trying to raise awareness, trying to, my Instagram Posting the video of, of his seizures and his movements mm -hmm. was very convicting yes. for me. But there has been, there was a child in Russia diagnosed from my video. Oh, wow. So like, I, I think as, it doesn't matter what I think. Yes. It's like, it has to be out there. Right. Because that has hel is helping people. Absolutely. And we'll make sure we put that up on the screen and your Instagram. And yeah. I can't thank you enough for coming thank and, and for sharing. And I'm so grateful for the miracle that Huxley is. And it's Thank such a joy you. to watch him. Thank so you very much. You all stay tuned. There's so much more to come. Dr. Brooks Gibbs will be here with a mental health moment um, just to encourage us. So stick with us and enjoy these moments that are just for you. For the Christian Television Network, I'm Dr. Brooks Gibbs. And welcome back to your mental health moment. Today's focus is hope. My favorite definition of hope is absolute assurance of coming good. And Romans 15 verse 13 really backs this up. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Cultivating hope is an essential skill for our mental health. Even when circumstances are challenging, Continue to trust in the absolute assurance of coming good. It's trusting in God and holding on to the joy and peace that only He can provide. And let this hope fill you and empower you, transforming your perspective and invigorating your life. Hope has the power to shine light on the darkest past and guide us toward a brighter future. So wherever you are, whatever you're facing, hold on to hope and let it lead you forward. Don't put it off because hope deferred will make your heart sick. Put it on, hope in God. For the Christian Television Network, I'm Dr. Brooks Gibbs. What If Moments for Moms is more than just a show. It is a community of moms encouraging each other on this incredible journey we have been called to. Join our private Facebook group to share your mom moments, questions, small victories, and connect with other moms as we all come together in this ministry called motherhood. We can't wait to see you there. What If Moments for Moms is available anywhere you listen to podcasts.
Whether you are running errands, driving your kids around, or heading to work, you can have a moment of encouragement just for you. Just search What If Moments for Moms and listen now. I'm here with my friend and coworker, Sharon. And Sharon, if you could give one piece of advice to moms, what would that be? Okay, so it's hard to just give one, but I'll give a few. And the first one and most important for me is um, praying over my son. I prayed over him, I prayed with him growing up. Even now he's 25 years old, about to get married. I still pray over him, I still pray with him. I tried to spend a lot of time with him growing up as well. And being an only child, I spend as much time as I can with him. And uh, also just be mindful of the foundation that I give him. And those are pretty much, you know, the most important things for me. But like I said, number one is definitely prayer. So good. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much yeah. for sharing. Who needs a filter when you have a personal bubble blower man? So, okay, so I was really hoping today, today's a Sunday and we went to church, we did all the things. I thought that he'd be tired at some point and want a nap. Um, obviously not cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So I was really hoping to have a mom moment today and something I really enjoy doing on Sundays is not so much meal prepping. I just really enjoy um, cooking, like cooking the meat for the week, cooking. He loves noodles, so I buy him the veggie noodles because he doesn't really eat a lot of vegetables. So I just try and cook some of the stuff that takes a little bit longer. <laughs> But obviously, he's not napping. So my mom moment has turned into um, outside Charlie play. And normally, my OCD type A personality would have a really hard time with that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the camera is lit. <laughs> but I'm just learning to enjoy the moments. And if I don't get a mom moment today, I get a Charlie moment. And I'm just really learning how to incorporate my mom moments into a Charlie moment because some days that's what I get and um, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. So if you're like me and you are like type A planner, want everything to fit into your schedule, um, I just encourage you to try and find the mom moments in the midst of whatever your day might look like. I'm hoping that your day is um, a tiny man making your personal bubble filter because that's extra awesome. So I hope you guys have a good day. I hope you find um, some moments for you in the midst of whatever your day might look like. We'll see you next time. We want to connect with you. Make sure to visit our website, momentsformoms.tv for the latest episodes of the show, guest information, resources, and so much more. Visit momentsformoms.tv today.